Hey, what's up guys? I'm creating this long-awaited Melee Warlock guide after many questions in the comments of my videos, and I just wanted to share all that I've learned after playing pretty much strictly Melee Warlock. I've had a lot of fun and success with it, and I hope it helps you guys too. However, I will say I don't know everything that there is about this game. I love this game, and I hope my many hours of playing can help you guys out, but I'm always learning new things, especially from other players, so if you have any ideas how to make this build even better, or any advice about exact percentage stats to shoot for, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. All right, with all that out of the way, this guide is mainly focused on solos, but I'm sure you can use this information to help you in duos and trios. The video is organized in the following way, and I'll put timestamps so you guys can more easily jump around, but we'll start off with pros and cons, and then move into perks and skills, tips and tricks, gear, and how to play each matchup ranked easiest to hardest. All right, starting out with the pros of Melee Warlock. First and foremost, I think the only reason that everybody loves this class or hates this class is the insane burst damage with Blow Corruption and Dark Reflection basically getting to the point where we can one-shot some classes. Second, since we run the Crystal Sword, which I'll get into in the gear section of this video, we deal mostly magic damage, which is hard to build against, and we cut through PDR builds like butter. Phantomize just has to be one of the best skills in this game, and it is so good in many, many situations, which we'll get into later. Blow of Corruption reduces healing by 70%, another reason that it f counters the fighters and clerics, and also this gives us an opportunity to try and reset the fight, heal, and obviously we can heal, but they're reduced by 70%, so we out-heal them, and then we can wait for our cooldowns and go back into the fight more healed than they are. Plus, I touched on it briefly, but Blow Corruption and Dark Reflection have a short cooldown, so if we do reset the fight, then we can go back in with those cooldowns up again. Next, we got the cons of the Melee Warlock. The biggest con by far is that this game is heavily ranged and movement speed dependent, but we have zero ranged attacks. So that makes the biggest con any ranged combat at all, because we literally have none besides throwable bottles like the Molotovs or the Lanterns, which I almost never use because if we want to go in for a kill uh, or phantomize, uh, we take 50% more magic damage, so we're, we'll literally kill ourselves with our Molotovs or Lanterns. I mean, even wizards can use throwing knives, but we, we don't even have that. So we'd have no axes, no throwing axes, no throwing knives. We just have to basically full sprint to people. Uh, you know, obviously phantomize helps with that, but yeah, that means the fight is entirely ours to mess up. And most classes, if they want to, can just put away their weapon and just run away from them. You know, obviously fighter has sprint and get away from us. Barbarian has a shout that gives a movement speed and <laughs> gives a max movement speed cap. Rangers don't even run chest place most of, most of the time, so if they put away their weapon, they just run away from us. They're faster than us. And yes, I know people say, you know, Phantomize gives you that 10% movement speed bonus, but because I would never recommend Phantomizing towards somebody with your fists out, uh, we get a movement speed penalty from having our weapon out, and there's nothing stopping those players from just putting away their weapons and running away in the opposite direction. And unless we build, like, some super... Um, fast movement speed build, which again, we'll get into. Uh, yeah, we're just not going to catch those people. Another con, blow corruptions, like timeout cooldown, if you want to call it that, uh, is pretty short. People can literally just cut you, run away, uh, while blow corruption, right when they see you pop blow corruption, because you have to pop it, you know, just a half a second before you go in the fight and people can just, uh, can just wait out the short cooldown. Phantomize isn't an insta-cast, so you can still get hit about a half a second after you use it. So I don't advise using it close to anybody, probably pop it around a corner or have some distance before you use it. Now I'm going to show a clip of me dying because of uh, I was too close when I popped it. And lastly, Phantomize has a long cooldown, and we take an additional 50% magic damage while we're Phantomized. So, obviously, Wizards Fireball, they can just shoot it at our feet, and we'll die pretty quickly because of that. Also, Molotovs and, like, the Throwing Lanterns, those can also kill us quickly, so you don't even need to be, like, a magic damage user uh, to be able to, you know, carry those around and throw it at our feet and kill us. The next topic is perks and skills. Let's start off with skills, because there's really only one option to choose from. That's Phantomize and Blow of Corruption. Phantomize states that you phase through melee attacks and projectiles for 6 seconds. While active, you gain 10% move speed bonus and lose 50% magical damage reduction. During this period, you can only move and do not collide with other players or monsters. So you can't attack in Phantomize. And basically, you just turn into Danny Phantom for about 6 seconds. Next, for Blow Corruption, your next physical attack deals 15 magical damage to the target and reduces their incoming physical healing and magical healing by 70% for 12 seconds. 
All right, so one other thing that I want to point out that it doesn't state in the game, but on the wiki, it states that this is evil magic damage. This is important when we start talking about perks, such as Soul Collector, uh, which gives a boost to dark magical damage, which is this, this is not, this is evil magical damage. So it doesn't scale with Soul, Soul Collector like Dark Reflection does, but we'll talk about that in just a second. All right, one other thing that I want to point out is that if you have Phantom Eyes on E and Blower Corruption on Q, then you're just wrong. And if you die, it's a skill issue. <laughs> just kidding, but uh, I definitely think you're wrong. All right, now moving on to perks. Before we get into the options of perks, let me just first explain the most asked about question in the comments, which is about if Soul Collector and Dark Enhancement work with this build. The short answer is yes, they do, but let me first explain. And honestly, I understand the confusion because the description of the perks are either worded really poorly or just flat out wrong. Soul Collector reads, when you deal the final blow to an enemy, one cursed soul is collected. You gain 10% dark magical damage bonus for each soul collected, up to a maximum of 6 souls, and when a dark magic spell is casted, consume all collected souls. In Dark Enhancement, says gain 10% dark magical damage bonus towards dark magic spells. So like I explained before, Blow Corruption is evil magic damage, so it doesn't scale with Soul Collector and Dark Enhancement. But Dark Reflection is Dark Magical Damage, so it does scale with Dark Reflection. And obviously it doesn't say that on the Dark Reflection skill, but when we jump over to the wiki and read it here, it does say that it's reflecting 10 Dark Magical Damage to the attacker. And honestly, that's why it's so confusing, because first of all, you know, it doesn't explain that this is Dark Magical Damage. And second, Dark, Enham dark Enhancement says that it's Dark Magic Spells, and this isn't a spell but uh, I tested it and it still works, so it is really confusing. Plus, when we look at Soul Collector, it's saying that uh, it's supposed to consume the stacks when the souls, uh, when you cast a spell, and then all the souls are consumed. However, since this isn't a spell, we get like the best of both worlds here and so much value, because when we hit six max souls, uh, we keep that for the entire game, and whenever Dark Reflection uh, goes off and procs, we don't lose the souls, and I'll play a clip of that now. So as you can probably tell, it's really important to get our Soul Collector stacks maxed right at the start of the game as fast as we can, because we'll keep them throughout the entire game. Now this honestly might be a bug, I'm not really sure, but in this patch right now, this is how it works. And having 70% Dark Magical Damage bonus on our Dark Reflection is pretty nice. <laughs> Obviously you can tell that uh, just from getting hit, I mean we're dealing a lot of damage, and I just want to quickly run through some math. Alright guys, so I'm pretty sure I have this math right, but if my math ain't math then, Please, one of you geniuses, correct me down in the comments. All right, so we start off with 10 damage from Dark Reflection. We can get a max of 11 additional magic damage from our gear. And if you run the magic staff, which we'll talk more about why I don't later, we can get an additional 10 if we run a purple magic, uh, magic staff, for example. Then if we max out our soul collector stacks and we're running Dark Enhancement, we can get another 70% damage. So another 21.7 damage, and that comes out to... 52.7 damage just from getting hit by somebody. Now, honestly, I'm not sure where our magic power bonus comes into this, and maybe this is even more damage, which would be crazy, but uh, maybe somebody can fill me in down in the comments, but 52 damage already is pretty crazy. All right, so with that explanation out of the way, there's really only two options that we would select uh, for perks. The first, which I usually always run, is Dark Reflection, which we just explained gives uh, reflects 10 magical damage to the attacker. Uh, Soul Collector, which is just crazy scaling with Dark Reflection. Malice, which will increase your will by 10%, and we already have a high will, so this is going to increase damage on um, the Crystal Sword, on Blow of Corruption, and all that. And lastly, we're not running Dark, Re Dark Enhancement, we're running Anti-Magic, uh, which gives you an additional 25% magical damage reduction, except against Divine Magical Damage. So, uh, not against, uh, you know, Clerics, but against wizards, which honestly, the reason I'm running this is because there's so many more wizards and geared wizards at that. Uh, and yeah, helps uh, survive those encounters. And the second, as you can probably guess, is just taking out uh, anti-magic and putting in dark enhancement for that extra 10% dark magical damage bonus. None of these other perks really help you at all uh, with melee warlock. They're all for casting. Uh, so you can pick between those, experiment, uh, see what you like, but this has been working for me the most is running anti-magic. Moving on to tips and tricks, you can bait out abilities and then use Phantomize to wait them out. That includes for Barbarian Shouts, Smite on Cleric, and even Blow of Corruption if you find another Warlock. Phantomize will make spells like Magic Missiles, Zap, and Curses, as well as physical attacks like 
arrows, crossbow bolts, Francisca axes, and melee attacks go right through you so you don't take damage. But you do take 50% more magic damage, so you can be hit by AoE splash damage, such as the splash damage from Wizard's uh, Fireball spell, Holy Strike from the Cleric, and Hellfire from Warlocks, just to name a few. All right, and if you guys aren't using Invis Pots, you're sleeping on them. They're seriously OP, and I hope you can see that from these clips. All right, so as you can see from this clip, Phantomize will not set off traps, so you can walk right across them, you know, wall traps, spike traps, and even ranger traps, but you will get hit by them if they're already up. This makes it super useful when you're trying to get up close to a ranger, and you can Phantomize early to go uh, through a doorway, and you can avoid all the traps that way. It's also a good idea to use Phantomize to reset melee uh, fights, as you can see from this clip. Basically, if you have a chance to get away from the fight, you can wait out your cooldowns like uh, Blow of Corruption and Dark Reflection while you're in Phantomize. The Blow of Corruption timeout is longer than Phantomize, so you can activate Blow of Corruption and then go into Phantomize and you can run right into somebody, and as soon as you get out of Phantomize, uh, then you can hit with the Blow of Corruption attack. Also, if you have it, the Elf Skin is definitely the best for Melee Warlock because it gives you the extra agility, and we're trying to stack as much agility as we can. So this last tip is pretty general, but it's good for new players to know. You move slower going backwards than you do going forward or side to side, so make sure if you're running away from somebody, you're not backpedaling, uh, and after you go in for a hit, you can turn to the side and, and get some more movement speed that way. All right, so for a normal lobby, um, picking up all this gear from the merchants, it'll run you right around 100 gold with the heals. Um, everything that you see here, I picked up from the merchants, aside from the Felshin. Obviously, this is just the default one that it gives you. And I picked up a Shadow Hood, Mystic Vestments, Reinforced Gloves, Loose Trousers, and Rugged Boots. Um, now, I could have waited around and bought a uh, Occultist Robe whenever he was offering it, but, you know, if you're just kind of picking up gear as you go, yeah, I think around 100 gold is going to be right where uh, you land. All right, now we're going to go over the actual gear that we want and the gear that we're shooting for. The average cost of a set like this will cost you around 2,000 to 2,500 gold. As a general rule of thumb, the stat priority is additional magic damage followed by movement speed and then vigor or max health. I like to be around 45 to 60% magic power bonus with my plus 11 additional or true additional magic damage. You can get plus two on your headpiece, and honestly, the Shadow Mask with the two all attributes is just the best. I wouldn't really go for any other headpiece. Uh, you can also get plus two on your rings and plus two on your cloak, and then you can actually get plus three on your necklace. You want to be over 100% movement speed with your weapon out. Uh, preferably over 103, but the more the better. Honestly, like 106 even is, is pretty good. You need to catch up to classes that uh, can just put away the weapon and run away from you. And then also I like to be over 105 health. Uh, usually, you know, some of the gear that we get puts us even higher over that, but uh, we'll get into that in just a second. The main reason that we focus on additional magic damage is because it scales with all our damage, Blow of Corruption, Dark Reflection, and the Crystal Sword. All right, with that being said, the first piece of gear that I pick up is the Purple Crystal Sword. I look for an 18-17 damage split because uh, that's max roll. So for 18 for weapon damage and then 17 for magic weapon damage. And it's that magic weapon damage that makes the Crystal Sword so valuable. Now, I just want to go over your two main weapon choices, which is the Crystal Sword, as I just mentioned, and the Magic Staff. And actually, the Magic Staff will give you more damage on Blow of Corruption and Dark Reflection, plus it's only minus 20 movement speed penalty, whereas the Crystal Sword is minus 30. The reason the Magic Staff does more damage is because that 10 magical damage uh, on the weapon scales with Blow of Corruption and Dark Reflection. However, the reason that I don't run the Magic Staff is because if you're not killing the person on the initial Blow of Corruption plus Dark Reflection hit, that I find when I'm fighting PDR fighters and geared clerics that I'm not killing them on that initial uh, blow and they can just out heal me. And because there's no magic weapon damage, uh, the swings after that are just physical damage and you're not really gonna be doing much damage to them. So I find that I lose those easy matchups more often. 
The second reason is because of the range and magic staff, you have to get a lot closer than you do with the crystal sword. And lastly, the swing pattern on the magic staff just isn't good against uh, fighters and clerics again because of the heater shield. Uh, I usually just end up hitting the shield, don't do any damage, uh, and then uh, you know I just get bodied. So for all those reasons and consistency sake, I always run the crystal sword. But yeah, you guys should try out both and see what works best for you. Honestly, the magic staff might be better for swisher targets, uh, but I find that the crystal sword is just more reliable overall. So yeah, give it a try and see which one you like better. All right, so after the crystal sword, again, I'll go for the shadow mask because of the two all attributes. Plus, uh, I look for the two true or two additional uh, magic damage. After that, I would say to look for a purple occultist robe or a blue one if you find some good stats on it. Uh, this is by far the best chest piece. The three vigor is really nice uh, for the extra health, but the biggest benefit is the 50 magic resist and it's only minus five movement speed. The problem is that they're really hard to find in the trade chat, so I usually save up my candy and buy them from uh, St. Nick. Two other chest pieces that you can run if you can't find the occultist uh, robe is the mystic vestments for the will or the adventure tunic for the max health bonus. After that, the gear to go for in no specific order is the reinforced gloves for the vigor, the loose trousers because they're only minus three movement speed and they give it a lot of agility, and then light foot boots because they give you the most movement speed by default. Some other options would be leather gloves for the extra will, rugged boots for the extra vigor, or occultist boots uh, for the will. But if I'm buying either of these, I always look for additional movement speed on the boots. And then if you can't find loose trousers or they're just too expensive, you can look for leather leggings. And then the last and final pieces that I usually look for just because they're the most expensive are the rings, cloak, and necklace. For the cloak, the most important thing is that you need to be looking for plus two additional or true additional magic damage. The best option, depending on stats, would be the adventurer cloak for the agility or the splendid cloak uh, for extra will, just kind of depending on which stats you still need to hit. For rings, again, plus two additional or true additional magic damage, that's priority number one. And honestly, it's hard enough to find these, so I usually don't care uh, what exact ring it is with other stats. But in a perfect world, it would be Ring of Quickness, Ring of Vitality, or Resolve, depending on which stats I need. And then it's pretty much the same thing for Pendants. However, you can get plus three additional magic damage on Pendants. Uh, so look for those. And again, these are also pretty hard to come by, so I usually don't care exactly what necklace it is. But in a perfect world, I would pick the Necklace of Peace, because it's kind of OP to get plus nine health on a purple necklace. And then the Bear, Fox, and Phoenix necklaces are all, all good too. One other thing that's optional for the build, and I'll get into uh, in more detail later in the video when we start talking about matchups, is I've been running a two-handed weapon. All right, I'm going to show the gear real quick, and then we're going to go into a game. I'm going to hit the dummy, see how much damage we do. Honestly, we could do more damage if we were ro rocking like leather leggings and some other will pieces, but again, movement speed is king. All right, testing out the damage. Got 55 plus 31. And another 50. So that is 136. Pretty good, pretty good. Then with the Vardish, we got 114. Plus another 48. So that's 162 with the Vardish. All right, so finally, we're going to go over how to play each matchup from easiest to hardest, D being the easiest, S being the hardest. And I'm also going to be showing clips to show you how to play each matchup. All right, the easiest matchup is probably no surprise. It's the Fighter. Both Slayer and PDR are pretty easy. PDR is definitely... A lot easier because they have low movement speed and you can just hear them all around the dungeon with those plate boots. The only thing that you really have to watch out for is if they hit you with a crossbow bolt at the beginning of the fight. So that's why you should phantomize earlier uh, to get catch up to them. And then also you need to watch out for a PDR fighter if they block your blow corruption hit with their shield. But otherwise, this is pretty much just a free matchup. Next is Cleric for similar reasons. Clerics are usually slow and clunky and we can bait out their attacks, hit them, and then move back before we get hit. Plus, Blow Corruption will stop them from healing in fights if we reset them. As for their skills, you need to bait it out to see which one they have. Uh, the ones that they'll pick is either Smite or Judgment. I wouldn't commit to a fight with a Cleric until you know which one that they have. If they're running Judgment, that's when they slap their hands together and like a big beam comes down and hits you. You can literally just run at them and just get an easy headshot. Smite's a little bit more dangerous. Uh, if you see their weapons start turning a greenish yellow, then just back away and run, run away from them. You're going to be faster than them. Uh, you can also Phantomize to wait it out if they're getting too close. And yeah, I mean, you just wait that out and then you go in and you win the fight. Also, it might be obvious, but don't fight a cleric when they're fully buffed. You can just wait it out, you know, run away from them. You're going to be faster than them. And also, if they take out their book to uh, rebuff, then you can just run in and kill them. Next up is Bard, and honestly, I don't know exactly where to put this class because I almost never see anybody play it. Uh, most people just have no clue. I've run into a few good Bards, um, and those have been a little bit more challenging fights. 
Plus they get crossbows and they have the drums. And I ran into a bar that had like six drums. And honestly, that's kind of OP. It's like having a crossbow that instantly reloads and the bullet's as big as a truck. All right, next up is Rogue, and honestly, I was thinking about putting this lower down on the list, because if you get into a close quarter fight with a Rogue, I mean, usually you just win, they're so squishy, and we basically kill them in one hit. However, if they do get behind you, and they use their movement speed to, to their advantage, then they can kill you. But the main reason I put it this far up is because of that build with the uh, hand crossbow and poison. I mean, I literally just can't catch that class, it's so fast, <laughs> it just like kills me from afar and yeah i haven't uh, found a great counter to that but if you're not running into that which is pretty rare then it's usually a pretty free uh free matchup next up we got warlocks in a tier if you see one running the magic staff bait out their blow of corruption you know kind of get close see if they have blow of corruption if they're a melee warlock then you don't really want to push them um, like i mentioned before the magic staff does have higher burst damage at first than the crystal sword so we could lose that matchup However, if you just bait it out, you play it right, uh, then you'll win that. The really difficult Warlock matchup, though, is when they're full casters. Uh, they can use Hellfire if we try to chase them with Phantomize. And don't chase them if you see them popping Hellfire, because you're just going to take a ton of damage. You can Phantomize through the Hydra, though, uh, and it won't hit you. So that is a plus, and you can kind of get on top of them. It really just kind of comes down to movement speed. If they have more movement speed than you, and oftentimes they do because the, the book has a less movement speed penalty than the Crystal Sword does, then they can just run away from you, kite you, hit you with curses, and yeah, you're just gonna have a bad time. That being said, I rarely run into other Warlocks, and when I do, they're usually pretty cool. Like my boy Jenks, he's another YouTuber you guys should definitely check out. For number three, we've got Rangers. Usually how this matchup plays out is they stand behind a doorway holding an angle with their bow drawn and they have about 10 traps all around them. You basically have two options. You can Phantomize early towards them so you can uh, get past all their traps. Or if they have to push into you because they have a bad zone, then you can just wait for them and then that's an easy kill. If you get right on top of the Ranger, then it's pretty much a free kill. Uh, they die in like two hits. But I see a lot of Rangers not even running a chest plate, so they have a lot of movement speed. Plus it takes them like a quarter of a second to put away their bow and they just run away and you'll like never catch them. So it's a really hard matchup if you're playing against a good Ranger. All right, second hardest matchup might come as a surprise, but it's actually Wizard. Our anti-magic perk plus the occultist robe definitely help out a lot, uh, and we can take like 50% less magic damage from a Wizard. In general, when you're fighting a Wizard, you should try baiting out their spells. They only have like, what, five max spells each? If they're running a 10 spell Wizard, it is, you know, <laughs> a little bit harder because they have so many spells at their disposal. But yeah, try to run up and just kind of bait out some of their attacks and just run away. Um, can keep doing that for a while. If you're close enough or you see that they're running low on spells, you can gap close by running Phantomize and bait out magic missiles and magic missiles just go straight through you. But you definitely have to be careful if they fireball you from afar. If they're hitting them and you with the fireball, it's kind of an even trade because you have so much magic resist. Otherwise, if they are hitting you with that fireball splash damage from afar, it's like you're Danny Phantom and they're the Ghostbusters and <laughs> they're just going to kill you. Most of the time, though, if you can get close enough to a wizard, it's pretty much game over for them. However, I've seen a lot more wizards run that, uh, I don't know what perk or skill that is, um, to give them like an extra shield. Plus they have that other, I think, perk that uh, gives them armor and slows your movement speed. Plus they have that slow spell so they can you know, like basically just kite you. If you run into a good wizard, it's game over. Like they have a lot of spells at their disposal. However, that means that high skill ceiling, you know, there's going to be a lot of bad wizards too, which I run into, and they're just going to not, not even know what to do uh, once you phantomize right on top of them. And lastly, the hardest matchup in the S tier is Barbarian. The reason this matchup is so hard is because it feels like it's almost impossible to beat them in a melee fight. Plus, even if you get to some distance, they have the Francisca axes, so they have some range, uh, some kind of range option, and we don't. 
Plus, a click of one button, they become the fastest class, a class with the most health, and have insane damage. Plus, they have Iron Will, which gives them plenty of magic resist to fight against us. Basically, to have a chance in this matchup, you have to bait out their shouts and then phantomize while keeping your distance. Another good tip is to fake running away, that way they take out their Francisca axes, and then you can run in and get the first hit before they even take out their weapon. I think the best chance that you have is one, you know, when they shout, phantomize, and then also this is why I'm bringing that uh, two-handed weapon specifically to fight barbarians. After their shout's over, you're kind of just hoping that you're more geared than them and your blow of corruption uh, plus a two-handed weapon is going to out-DPS them. Obviously, we're showing some clips in the background, and in some of these you can see, like, I'm pretty much playing perfectly. I'm baiting out their two-handed swings, stepping away, and, you know, fandomizing if uh, they shout or at least keeping my distance, and then going in, and it seems like... <laughs> Even though I'm almost playing perfectly, uh, you know, Hank still almost win. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video was helpful at all, please consider subscribing. I'm working my way up towards a thousand subscribers. Also, if you want to try this build, watch this video here to see how I snowballed from nothing into some decent gear. Okay, see you guys in the next one. Peace.